Hello and welcome. Today we're going to take a look at how to add custom materials in Rhino. So you can select the whole object itself or you can select the, the, the face if you just want to add it to a particular face. Once you have that object selected, you can come over to the Properties tab and then go to the Paint tube. Just note that you don't want to go to this one over here. That goes to the global uh, materials. You want to make sure that this one is selected. Now at this point you are assigning the material. So you can come up here and we can say use a new material and we can do custom. Please note if you use glass or another type, sometimes you're more limited in what you can do with that material. That's why I always like to do custom even if I'm doing glazing. So let's call this custom one for right now. And then if we wanna set the color, we can do that here. And if we want to add a texture to the material, which can be pretty nice, we can do that as well in here. And you can come in here and maybe use that less. A lot of the times I'll just pick a grunge texture. So let's go ahead and do that. To give the material some texture. Now you'll notice too, what I can do is I can click on this and I can change the scale. So let's say I wanted to, to make it smaller or if I wanted to rotate the texture, I could do that as well to have it happen more frequently. And you can start to see now I'm seeing lines in there. So I'd go back and adjust that and set it to where I want it. The next thing that you can change with the custom materials is the environment sorry, not the environment, the transparency. And that will give you a different patterning to actually the actual transparency itself. So we can turn this down as well. So that can be a fun thing to experiment. Sometimes you can do a stripe pattern here, like the grid, and then that comes through like that. Now let's take a look at how to apply it to a particular face. I can do control, oh, I just did control Z. If you do control shift, I can select a face. Now, once I have that object selected, I can come in here and just select that face itself. Please note that another really good strategy is to set materials based on the layer, not just on the object itself. And so you can have you can move all your objects on specific layers depending on the material that you want it to be. And usually I'll start off this way and then later on if I do need to just change one material itself, I'll go and change that. But typically it's a lot quicker to set it per the whole uh, layer and then organize your layers that they're corresponding to those material changes. So for instance, if I were to have siding, that would be on the siding layer and that would all have the same material. So you can not only set color, material, line type, uh, print width, you can set a lot of parameters in here. Right now we're just gonna do the, uh, let's, let's do the other custom so we can see how this is gonna override the material. And you'll notice that none of these materials uh, changed. And that's because when you go to the properties, it's set to, set to a custom material. Now you have to go back and say, use layer material. And that's gonna say, okay, you're gonna use those uh, global parameters. And then you can always come back here and select the object and then make it custom. So you can either set the materials using the layers or you can set the materials selecting the object. You just need to make sure when you have this object selected that you're saying use layer material. You can also set the display color in here. So let's say I wanted this to display red and you'll notice in the shaded view that will change the various colors as well. So you can also just do it right in this panel as well here. So color, I could change this to, to blue for instance. Let's, and that just is in the shaded view. The rendered view, I, the, line, the only thing now that's is coming up is these uh, blue line work here. And you can also change the print color 
and also the line type as well. So a lot of options and there's a couple ways to get there, but that's just a quick overview of how to use materials in Rhino. I hope you liked the video and if you'd like to see more tutorials on how to be a better architect, uh, please like and subscribe. Have a good day.